Why, hello there, viewer. Uh, I am re-uploading Thanos Quest. <laughs> I am re-uploading Thanos Quest the way it was originally done. I'm not editing or changing it or like remastering it at all. And I'm kind of doing it for posterity's sake because it's a classic video series that I did on my channel. Like originally, like in like Thanos Quest, Infinity Gauntlet, like those are what really helped to blow up my channel, that and Civil War. And I don't want to change those. So <laughs> keep in mind, these are videos made from like four years ago uh, Rob was a little different back then. So the Thanos quest is an essential read for anybody looking to get into the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, and especially with the current set of events that we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. The first reason is because this gives us an introduction to how it is that Thanos gains the Infinity Gems, and we'll see that as the comic progresses, we'll first see them described as the Soul Gems, and then we'll see Thanos change the name effectively to Infinity Gem. But the other reason why this is very important is because this story that we see, the uh, Thanos quest is in effect what we see going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at this moment. It's going on in the background. It's not necessarily a main front storyline like what we see going on here with this uh, this Jim Starlin run, but this is in effect what's going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thanos is going on a quest to track down the Infinity Gems. Now what we'll see is that as the story progresses, individuals that that hold the Infinity Gems are simply individuals that we just haven't been introduced to yet in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and we may never be introduced to them. Of course, we'll see, for example, that the possessor of the Power Gem in the Thanos Quest storyline is vastly different than the possessor of the Power Gem in the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, but the basis for this remains the same. Thanos is simply just tracking down the Infinity Gems and attempting to use them for the task of uh, eliminating half the life in the universe. Now, what we see going on here as the story picks up is that we don't know Thanos Thanos is assigned the task of eliminating half the life in the universe. All we see here is that Thanos is peering into the Infinity Well. Now, of course, if you remember our discussion, we, we had talked about the uh, Adam Warlock and the Infinity Watch and so on and so forth. We had mentioned the Infinity Well, and we had said that the Infinity Well is a source of infinite knowledge, but the problem here is that it's only a source of infinite knowledge for people who are able to ask the right questions, and so it's not as though you can simply just peer into it and know everything about everything. What we see is that one of the servants of Mistress Death arrives, and this servant, uh, speaking on behalf of Mistress Death, asks Thanos why it is that he's not fulfilled the, uh, the assignment that was given to him by Mistress Death, that the universe, uh, as he says it, awaits death's gentle touch. What we also see is that uh, Thanos tells this uh, servant that he is peering into the infinity well to find an answer on how to achieve this. He's finding an answer on how to achieve the goal that Mistress Death has given him. Now, of course, again, we don't know exactly what this is, but then what we see is that he is brought towards or brought in front of Mistress Death. And Mistress Death, again, with one of her servants, asks Thanos the question, why it is he hasn't done this yet. Of course, we see that Thanos replies by, uh, by simply saying, is it really necessary that his faith and his uh, servitude to Mistress Death be questioned, that everything he's done has been done in a way to serve Mistress Death faithfully, and that for him it seems kind of an insult that they would come along and ask the question, why have you not fulfilled this task? What we also see is that uh, the task that has been laid before Mistress or before Thanos by Mistress Death is to eliminate half the life in the universe. But uh, with Thanos, the problem here is that it would take several lifetimes, even his lifetimes, despite the fact that he is an extremely powerful being, uh, it would take quite some time in order for him to achieve this task, given the powers that he has at the moment, because the size of the universe is absolutely massive, and even the life within it is teeming. There are quite a number of, uh, of species and individuals and so on that are alive within the universe, and so to simply eradicate half of them is something that is, for the most part, almost impossible. We then see that Thanos says that in looking in the Infinity Well, he has learned of a source of power that could allow him to expediate this process, that could allow him to uh, eliminate half the life in the universe in an extremely fast amount of time. In addition, he goes as far as to say that it will augment his powers, it will give him more powers. And so again, this will tie into the element of him being able to do this in a much faster pace. But then we see that uh, when clarification is asked, that when uh, more information is asked on behalf of Mistress Death in terms of what these items are, Thanos reveals to us the soul gems. And this is when we learn about the basis of these gems, although what we'll see as time progresses and each gem is captured is that each gem has a power unto its own and that those that a description of that power will be given to us by Thanos. What we see is that uh, Thanos says that 
the problem here with these gems is that they're wielded by various individuals. In fact, with six gems, they're wielded by six individuals. But the individuals who wield them don't know their power. A lot of the individuals that wield them simply view them as trinkets or talismans of some kind, but they don't actually know the basis behind them. And that if Thanos is able to wield all six of these infinity gems or these soul gems, that he can use them for the purpose of eliminating all life in the universe for the benefit of, uh, of Mistress Death. What we also see is Thanos asking permission to uh, to seek out these soul gems and he tells mistress death that the first person he intends to go after is the in-betweener from here we see that thanos is granted permission by mistress death to uh, to go under the i guess to fulfill the quest of capturing these six soul gems and of course we see thanos making um, heading towards his goal which is the location of the in-betweener at this point we learn where it is the in-betweener is at and the in-betweener is actually between dimensions he is uh, between the pulling, I guess, the uh, the forces of Master Order and Lord Chaos. And this makes sense, just because the in-betweener was created as a go-between for Master Order and Lord Chaos, but also as a way to represent the opposing forces of chaos and order within the universe. And of course, uh, neither of these forces can ever have any more power than the other because it would cause the universe to bend in the favor of whichever individual is more powerful. And the universe has to exist within the balance or with the balance of order and chaos. Chaos. At this point, we uh, find out that what had gone on here is that the in-betweener at some point along the line had effectively... Um I guess, gone beyond the uh, the role that was given to him. He had, for some reason or another, or in some, some method, angered Master Order and Lord Chaos. And so as a result, they have imprisoned him in between the uh, opposing forces of Master Order and Lord Chaos within a bubble, within a sphere that he cannot penetrate. We also see that on this chunk of land, there are various uh, individuals, various organisms or aliens that were placed there by Master Order and Lord Chaos to ensure that, uh, that the in-betweener cannot escape or that nobody can uh, can effectively break in and save him but the problem here is that when they were created when these uh, these creatures were made the concept of Thanos being as powerful as he is was never considered and so what we see is that Thanos is able to completely eradicate all these forces that are there to uh, to guard the in-betweener at this point, we see the in-betweener and Thanos engaging in a conversation, and I would like you to pay very close attention here, because this is the way that Thanos is going to capture the Infinity Gems. Thanos is, in effect, going to manipulate uh, various individuals in order to steal their gem, and the first person, and I think probably the best manipulated person, is the uh, is the in-betweener. What we see going on here is that Thanos approaches the in-betweener and tells the in-betweener that he laments serving Mistress Death, that in the service of Mistress Death, he has, con he has come to a point where he simply just has a distaste for it and that he wants to leave Mistress Death, but the problem is that he cannot leave their service or leave her service without invoking her ire, which may very well result in its own demise, and that his goal here is to free the in-betweener and then enter the service of the in-betweener, who in turn will be able to protect Thanos from Mistress Death. The in-betweener is a little skeptical here, but the issue is that, of course, Thanos has his own goals, and the in-betweener, believing that Thanos is, a, is actually wanting to enter his service also suspects that there may be some kind of ulterior motive. We of course see that uh, at this point the in-betweener simply wants to use Thanos' motivation to leave Mistress Death and enter his own service as a means to escape his prison. And so the in-betweener agrees. What we see is that Thanos and the in-betweener use their own abilities. We see Thanos attacking the sphere from without and the in-betweener attacking the sphere from within. And uh, both of them are able to in effect completely destroy the prison. At this point we see that uh, the in-betweener sees Thanos for what he is. He calls Thanos a liar, calls him a, a, a traitor. And uh, we see that when the in-betweener attempts to use his power on Thanos, that nothing happens. And we see Thanos, uh, in effect, overpower the in-betweener. And Thanos tells the in-betweener that the only reason why he came was to take his soul gem, to take the gem from off of his head. What we also see going on is that the in-betweener is confused as to how his powers worked, as to why it is his powers are not working now, despite the fact that they worked within the sphere. We see Thanos explain to the in-betweener that this was done intentionally by Master Order and Lord Chaos as a way for uh, the in-betweener to serve out his term, his uh, most likely eternal imprisonment, without being in such a place where he would be unable to use his powers. This was more or less them just being uh, merciful on him, and that outside 
outside of uh, any sort of real dimension, outside or I guess in a place where the opposing forces of uh, order and chaos meet, that his powers are canceled out. And so as a result, he's powerless. And so what we see is that uh, Thanos tells the in-betweener that he can't be sensed by Master Order and Lord Chaos. And there are a little, there are some reasons behind this, although we're not going to go too far into it. If you are interested in that, of course, uh, you can find that in the video that we did about Thanos proper. But we see that Thanos uh, sort of taunts the in-betweener and tells the in-betweener that because Master Order and Lord Chaos can't sense him, they don't know that he was there to help break uh, the in-betweener out of his prison. But because of the fact that the prison was, was created by Master Order and Lord Chaos, they are going to be aware that the in-betweener is free from his binds and that most likely the prison they're going to put him in is now going to be much less merciful than the prison that he was freed from. At this point, of course, we see that Master Order and Lord Chaos appear and while the in-betweener pleads and tells Master Order and Lord Chaos that it wasn't necessarily his fault that uh, Thanos was the one that freed him, that off panel or I guess uh, outside of our ability to see that he's most likely subjected to, to a new form of imprisonment. At this point, we see Thanos uh, begin to sort of of a focus or to ponder this new infinity gem, the first of the six infinity gems. And we see him say that at, the, at one point this had belonged to Adam Warlock and that this uh, infinity gem is the soul gem. This is the gem that allows uh, the wielder to manipulate and to ensnare the souls of other people. At this point, we see that Mistress Death and one of her servants arrive. And of course, again, the servant speaking on behalf of Mistress Death ask Thanos if he truly laments his service to Mistress Death. We see that Thanos say that this was simply just a ruse, that it was uh, it was simply said to trick the in-betweener into allowing Thanos to help him escape his imprisonment and then allow Thanos to capture his soul gem. We see that as this explanation is given, that uh, Thanos says that his word is his bond, that he has always served Mistress Death faithfully, and there's no reason for her to question his faith even, uh, even at this point. We see that Mistress Death is uh, satisfied with his explanation, and she and her leave. And then Thanos again continues to ponder under these circumstances and come to the conclusion that while he had expected to uh, Mistress Death to uh, spy on him, he didn't. He wasn't really sure if it would actually happen or not, but that this confirms that they are watching him. And so we see Thanos reveal to us that he has an ulterior plan, although at this point we don't really know what it is. From here, we're going to go ahead and bring the video to an end, and in the next video, we're going to pick up with the second Soul Gem, where Thanos travels to a planet called uh, Tamarata, where he fights a being known as the Champion, an elder of the universe who wields the Power Gem. With that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace. So as we continue our discussion on the Infinity Quest, we pick up with the uh, acquisition of the Power Gem at the hands of Thanos against the foe, the Champion. And what we see going on here is that Thanos has arrived at the planet Tamarata. And as Thanos explains it to us, Tamarata is a planet which has, is a strategic location for five different warring factions, and that because it's such a strategic location, this planet is in effect a war zone. This planet is constantly being conquered by one of the five factions, and then reconquered by another of the five factions. And what we see is that the champion, who is an elder of the universe and wields the power gem, calls this place his home. And the reason why is because there's always conflict. There's always the ability for him to test his prowess, because the champion lives for combat. What we see is that uh, the champion, for the most part, is simply just uh, tearing away at the landscape, tearing away against various enemies. And all this really does is give us uh, an idea of where he stands in terms of his capabilities and his powers. But what we also see is that Thanos gives us an explanation on the, uh, the stance or where it is that the champion stands in the grand scheme 
of the Marvel Universe. And what we learn here is that by wielding the Power Gem, the champion has become one of the foremost foes within the Marvel Universe, one of the uh, strongest individuals, but that he never really knows or he never actually knows what's going on with his gem. He doesn't realize that the uh, the Power Gem gives him near infinite, uh, an infinite source of uh, physical energy, the ability to manipulate the energies into sheer physical strength. And so what we see as uh, as this story progresses is that Thanos arrives on uh, Tamarata and confronts the champion. Now, one thing I would like you guys to pay very close attention here is that, again, what we will see is that Thanos is able to manipulate his opponent. And this, I think, is one of the most uh, interesting attributes of Thanos. A lot of people look at Thanos and view him as some sort of uh, extremely powerful individual, some sort of uh, being who has vast uh, energy manipulating powers and physical strength, but doesn't view him as someone who is extremely smart, when in fact, that is very much the case. While Thanos has a vast array of powers at his disposal, his most formidable weapon is his mind, it's his intellect, and his ability to think strategically. And so what we see is that Thanos arrives, and Thanos tells Champion that he has arrived on this planet seeking a challenge, seeking someone worthy of facing him. And uh, the Champion tells him that on this planet, Thanos will only find a feat because the Champion is invincible. He is the strongest there is. And so what we see is that Thanos and the champion begin to engage in combat and almost immediately Thanos is able to uh, to demonstrate to us that he's capable of not necessarily physically overpowering the champion, but at the very least outthinking him. And this is one of the drawbacks. This is one of the inherent flaws of the champion. The champion, as Thanos will explain to us over the course of this comic book, relies too much on his physical power. He, uh, he doesn't think enough, basically. And so because of this, any opponent that he goes against who is or who has any real measure of, uh, of intellect is going to be able to outthink him and is going to be able to uh, to easily outmaneuver him and effectively beat him simply just by using his mind. Now, the conflict, for the most part, isn't that incredible of a conflict. It's really not that amazing. For the most part, we just see Thanos uh, fighting the champion and uh, engaging the champion in combat, and over time, making the champion angrier and angrier. And this is one thing that Thanos takes note of, that, Tha that uh, the champion is very similar to the Incredible Hulk in terms of how he develops or how he gains his power, that the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. But again, Unlike the Incredible Hulk, the power that the champion has is drawn from the power gem on his forehead and not from anything due to his actual physiology. What we also see is that as this uh, as the story progresses, as this conflict continues on, that eventually uh, the champion in an enraged state falls right into the trap that Thanos had set. And this trap was uh, the champion jumping into the sky, coming back down, and then destroying the planet Tamarata. And the reason why this was a trap that Thanos had set is because Thanos wanted this to be done. He wanted the champion to destroy the planet. And the reason for this is because the power gem allows the champion to manipulate its energies, but the champion is only able to manipulate its energies in the, in the form of physical strength, and so the champion can't fly. And this is what we see Thanos telling the champion. This is what we see him uh, communicating to him as he begins to taunt him, that the problem here is that while the champion is immortal, while he's an elder of the universe and that he can't die, he can't go anywhere. And so he's effectively just floating in endless space forever. We see that Thanos, I'm sorry, that uh, the champion says that he'll battle Thanos for his vessel, and, and uh, Thanos simply says no. There's no reason for him to, that uh, there's really nothing worth fighting over anymore. And this, again, is simply just Thanos baiting the champion. What we then see is uh, the champion pleading with uh, Thanos, saying that Thanos can't simply just leave him there. Thanos replies by, again, telling the champion that, uh, that he's immortal, that the vacuum of space won't kill him, and that maybe in a few centuries somebody will arrive to, uh, to take him somewhere else. We then see that uh, that the champion continues to plead, and Thanos says that he will move him, he will take him to another location, but only for a price. And when the champion asks him what that price is, Thanos says it's his soul gem, the gem on his forehead. We then see that um, that the champion initially says no, that he's not going to do this, that somebody will find him at some point or another. And then uh, Thanos replies by saying that if that happens, if somebody does arrive, they'll remember who the champion is, that he's violent, that he is an individual that lives for warfare, and 
and they may very well simply just leave him there. At this point, the champion surrenders his gem to uh, Thanos and tells Thanos that it never functions anyway, which again gives credence to the uh, statement that Thanos had made at the beginning of the Thanos quest that uh, the individuals who wield these gems simply don't know what they're capable of. At this point, we see that uh, Thanos locks a tractor beam onto uh, the champion and begins to drag the champion away. And then what we see is that he deposits the champion onto uh, onto another planet. And when the champion asks why it is that he's doing this, Thanos simply says that their agreement was that Thanos would take him to another planet, but that he wouldn't uh, wouldn't exactly that he didn't it didn't specify how he would be transported to that planet. At this point, we see Thanos uh, really looking over the gems, looking over the fact that he has gained the Soul Gem, which again allows total control over uh, sentient souls, and the Power Gem, which uh, as we'll see in the uh, next portion of the comic where we discuss the Gardener, will be the foundation for all of the other gems. At this point, we transition to the Gardener, and again, the Gardener is one of the elders of the universe, meaning that he is one of uh, a handful of individuals who are the last remem uh, remaining members of their race. And for the most part, while this uh, comic, this portion of the comic actually has no real combat, I would go as far as to say that it is probably one of the best written segments of the Thanos quest, if not one of the most interesting written segments of, uh, of Marvel Comics, which again is simply a testament to how great of a writer uh, Jim Starlin is. What we see is uh, Thanos uh, discussing, talking to us about how um, the Garden of the Gardener is a beautiful place, how it is a, a gorgeous place. It's a very well-developed area and that um, the gardener realizes that Thanos is there to capture his uh, capture his soul gem. What we see is that uh, the gardener and Thanos begin to go on a, a walk of sorts. The uh, the gardener takes relish in the fact that Thanos is able to appreciate his garden. He's able to appreciate the work that has been put in it. And then we see that Thanos asks the gardener why it was that he had left the elders of the universe, why he had left this uh, sort of um, I guess loosely tied group. And what we see the gardener saying is that the elders of the universe had sought power. That was their own real motivation. They had simply just sought power. And once they gained power, they want, they had a lust for more power. But all he ever really wanted to do was to simply tend his garden. And that uh, once he was able to do that, once he was able to gain his, uh, his soul gem, it allowed him the ability to manipulate his garden, which of course he went back to. We also see that uh, he tells Thanos that because he is able to capture, or because he does have a soul gem, that his garden is able to bloom uh, more beautifully than has ever been done. And again, we're not really given any indication as to whether or not the gardener realizes that he's the one doing this, although we will learn at the end of the comic that it is the infinity gem or the soul gem that's causing this and not necessarily the powers of the gardener. From here, we see that the uh, the gardener and uh, Thanos begin to stare each other down. And this is very reminiscent of a uh, Kurosawa film, an old uh, samurai film, where we see uh, two opposing forces, two enemies who, for the most part, have respect for one another but have contradicting ideas, stare each other down in this sort of, uh, I guess, ultimatum kind of scenario. And this is when we learn that uh, the gardener is aware that Thanos is here to take his soul gem. And Thanos tells the gardener that the reason for this is because he needs to further his own schemes. And the gardener replies if these schemes are more important than the gardener's garden. Thanos says yes. He says that he cannot, uh, his love for Mistress Death cannot be denied. And the gardener tells him that he cannot give up his soul gem without a fight, that this simply just cannot happen. And so Thanos begins to uh, not necessarily beg with the gardener, but to plead with him, to simply say, I ask that you give up your gem, that you don't make me fight you. And so, um, we see that the gardener rejects this. The gardener says that that's not going to happen, that he is going to have to put up a fight. We also see the gardener recognizes that Thanos does have two of the six infinity gems. He has the soul gem and he has the power gem, which makes him a very formidable foe and somebody that the gardener most likely will not be able to beat. But then we see that, uh, again, Thanos says that he has no wish to harm him. He has no wish to harm the gardener and that uh, his intention here is to simply just acquire his gem. At this point, we see that uh, the gardener attempts to use his abilities to uh, control his garden to ensnare Thanos. And uh, again, Thanos simply just indicates to us, just demonstrates to us his power and being able to destroy the, uh, the garden or being able to destroy the, uh, the trap that has been ensnared around him. At this point, we see Thanos giving us this explanation of the gardener. And what we see is that 
Thanos tells us that the Infinity Stones, the Infinity Gems, may very well predate time. Not only that, the Infinity Gems may very well be the cornerstone of all creation, that because each gem represents some facet of creation, that the gems themselves are the source of power for these various forms of creation. And that again, that uh, with all of the uh, gems combined, that all actuality, all, um, all reality can simply be controlled. What we see him doing is giving us, again, another explanation of the two gems that he has. He tells us that Warlock's gem is the key to controlling all of the uh, the souls of sentient life. We see him tell us that the power gem is the foundation. The power gem is what is able to power the rest of the gems due to its, uh, its infinite power. And then we see that Thanos tells us that the gem that was in possession of the... Uh, of the the gardener was the time gem. And he tells us that the reason why the gardener was able to manipulate his garden in such a way was because he was able to use the time gem to begin the process of growing his garden and then manipulate time to speed his garden up to the point where the plants and the various life were able to grow to their uh, to their adult phase or to their fullest. And then he effectively froze them in time so that they would never actually wilt. But then we see uh, that what had actually happened here is that while Thanos is giving us this explanation that the gardener is in fact dead. The gardener was killed. And Thanos was able to do this by using the power gem to effectively uh, speed up the power or to augment the power of uh, the gardener's garden in order to uh, to move the garden beyond the gardener's control to the point that he couldn't stop it from overtaking his body. And in fact, this is somewhat of a haunting image if you, uh, if you stare at it long enough. <laughs> With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. So the Thanos quest is an essential read for anybody looking to get into the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, and especially with the current set of events that we see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now there's a couple reasons for this. The first reason is because this gives us an introduction to how it is that Thanos gains the Infinity Gems, and we'll see that as the comic progresses, we'll first see them... So as we continue our discussion on the Thanos quest, what we need to do is rehash what has happened so far. And the reason why is because moving forward, the next videos are going to be very fast because there's going to be quite a bit happening in a short amount of time just because we're beginning this fast build up to the Infinity Gauntlet proper. So at this point, Thanos has three of the six Infinity Gems. The first Infinity Gem that was captured was the Green Soul Gem that was captured from the Inbetweener. And this allows its wielder to manipulate all facets of the soul. The wielder can corrupt souls. The wielder can bring souls back from the dead. The wielder can do a multitude of things and has total control over the concept of the soul. The second Infinity Gem that was captured was the Red Power Gem, and this was captured from the Champion, and this allows its wielder to manipulate all facets of power, and in fact, gives its wielder total omnipotence, meaning they have absolute power within the universe. In addition, this Soul Gem, or this Infinity Gem, is very important because this is the basis, this is the foundation for the rest of the gems. This allows the rest of the gems to reach their full potential by drawing off the unlimited power of the Power Gem. Now, the other thing, that I would like you guys to pay very close attention to is that while these gems have power, while they have incredible power all their own, they work best when they're in tandem. They work best when they're working together. Now the third gem and the gem that was last captured is the, the orange time gem. And this was captured from the gardener. And this allows its wielder to manipulate all facets of time. They can travel into the past, into the present, and into the future, and to send individuals to each of these locations. In addition, it grants total omniscience, meaning that its wielder can know everything that has happened, is happening, or will happen happen within the universe. Now as we continue with our story on the Thanos quest, we see that we're meeting up with the Collector, and Thanos gives us a brief explanation of the Collector in the Marvel Universe. Thanos simply tells us that his name is exactly what it sounds like, that he simply collects things. He collects people, he collects organisms, he collects anything that he finds to be very rare or very interesting or very powerful. In addition, what we also see is that this is an obsession for the Collector, that unlike the Grandmaster who enjoys games of chance or the champion who enjoys conquest and power, or the gardener who simply just wants to, to live in peace, that the collector has a drive to use his power to collect anything that he finds to be interesting. What we also see here is that the collector is waiting on a message from Thanos. And when we see Thanos communicating with the collector, when he first contacts the collector, 
Thanos asks the Collector if he knows why he's contacting him, and the Collector says yes. The Collector says that he's aware that Thanos is uh, pursuing his Infinity Gem, and the Collector has been monitoring Thanos since his first uh, encounter with the Champion. From here, we see Thanos again display his honorable side, where he tells the Collector he has no interest in destroying him, that he has no interest in killing him, he simply just wants his gem. In addition, he plays on the desire of the Collector to collect things by telling the Collector that he has or will be coming into possession of a very rare item, something that is one of a kind, and something that he's willing to trade the Collector's Infinity Gem for. Now, what we also see here is uh, Thanos saying that this may have been a little bit of a gamble here. This may have been a little bit dangerous. And the reason why is because it's very possible or most likely that the Collector doesn't know the, uh, the abilities of his gem, because if he did, then the results would be very apparent. And so Thanos says, by telling the Collector that he's willing to trade something for his gym, the collector may investigate the properties of his gym and by doing so, discover what it is that his gym's capable of. But Thanos simply says this is worth the risk, that sometimes in order to gain uh, absolute victory, you have to take some sort, of, uh, some sort of risk. And he effectively tells us nothing ventured, nothing gained. From here, we see Thanos simply just waiting. And Thanos waiting to see what happens. If the collector is able to discover the power of his gem, then Thanos will be able to see the results. If the collector is unable to discover the power of his gem, then Thanos will not see the results. And what we see is that nothing happens. Nothing uh, takes place. Nothing to indicate to Thanos that the collector has discovered what it is that his gem is capable of. And so from here, we see Thanos setting, uh, laying out coordinates to travel to what's uh, what appears to be the location of an elder of the universe called the Runner. And so what we see is is that Thanos teleports away, and he teleports to the locations of where the runner is supposed to be. But when he arrives, the runner is nowhere to be found. At this point, we see that Thanos' ship, his teleportation device, begins to effectively disintegrate. And then at this point, we see that something is passing through his ship and is, in effect, destroying it. The runner makes him so, or he appears uh, to Thanos, and he tells Thanos that uh, that he amazes himself with how fast he's able to travel. And Thanos, again, begins to play on on the uh, the bravado that the runner is displaying here, and again, this is something that I hope you noticed. The Thanos never goes into the plan of capturing an Infinity Gem without having everything laid out beforehand. And so, what we'll see as the story progresses is that the runner will effectively fall right into the trap that Thanos has set, the same way that we saw Champion fall into the trap that was set by Thanos. What we see is that the runner is able to uh, recognize his ability to move so fast due to the fact that he's drawing on the powers of his Infinity Gem. Now, he doesn't realize what the Infinity Gem is capable of. He simply just realizes that it does have power because the Grandmaster had warned him that Thanos would be coming for his Infinity Gem. And so it's somewhere along the line, the runner began investigating its properties. What we see here is that the runner is able to move at incredible speed. He's able to exceed the speed of light. And in fact, he's able to ex exceed the speed of thought. At this point, we see Thanos questioning this. Thanos asks him, are you really the, the fastest thing in the universe, and if you are, then prove it. And so we see that the runner is uh, moving incredibly fast, moving so fast, in fact, that he appears to be in multiple places at the same time, speaking simultaneously. From here, we again see that the runner is displaying this vast bravado. He's very arrogant in his abilities, and that uh, he, he boasts the fact that Thanos would be able to do nothing to stop him. Thanos is unable to do anything to, uh, to keep him from effectively getting away if he chose to. At this point, we see that the runner uh, effectively threatens Thanos. He tells Thanos, either tell me what it is that you're here for, tell me why it is that you're capturing the gems, or I'm going to use my speed to kill you. And so what we see is that Thanos begins to explain the origins of the soul gems, which I think is something that many of you will find very, very interesting. Thanos tells us that the infinity gems are something that had been a secret that no one had really known about for billions of years, and that while individuals had possession of the soul gems, they never really knew what they were capable of. Thanos tells us that at one point in time, the infinity gems were a single entity. They were a single being that had limitless power, and that this being was the only thing in the universe. And that the problem is that because it was the only thing, because it had power, because it had uh, emotion, because it had sentience, that it recognized that there was really nothing for it. There was really nothing for it to do. There was 
no purpose in its life. And so it had an effect, simply just existed forever. It existed alone. And so it felt this extreme amount of loneliness. And so as a result, it self-destructed. It effectively killed itself. And when it did, it dispersed itself among the six infinity gems that were spread throughout the universe. And so once these gems are brought together, Thanos is going to be able to utilize them to effectively make himself an equal to Mistress Death and to sit next to Mistress Death as her mate, in, uh, so to speak. And so what we see is that uh, the runner begins to boast. The runner says that his he, that he's effectively going to kill Thanos and that the secrets of the Infinity Gems are his alone. No one else will know what the gems are capable of. Thanos tells the runner that he's a fool, that the only option that had been given to him by the Grand Master was to run and that he should have listened to the Grand Master because the Grand Master is probably the wisest and most likely the most powerful of all the elders of the universe and that running was the only thing that could have saved uh, the runner from Thanos. At this point, we see that Thanos again begins to taunt the runner and says that the runner, instead of listening to uh, to the Grand Master, chose to boast. He chose to be arrogant. And so instead of uh, taking the intelligent route, instead of running, that he simply stayed. And so Thanos tells the runner that not all weapons that exist are massive. Not all weapons are uh, huge. That some of the most dangerous weapons are some of the smallest things that appear to be harmless. And so what we see is that Thanos explains to the runner that he was, in effect, manipulating space, that he wasn't uh, running at super speed, that he was more or less creating wormholes, that he would subconsciously desire to be somewhere, and before his conscious mind caught up to it, he would be there, which was, in effect, manipulating space itself, at which point we learned that the runner is in possession of the space gem. From here, we see that what Thanos had done here as he was conversing with the runner was manipulate time and that he had, in effect, aged the runner by a million years, and by doing so, put the runner in such a position to where he was simply just feeble. There was nothing he could do to escape Thanos, and so Thanos takes his soul gem away. And again, what we see Thanos do is manipulate time once more, which brings us into the second part of Thanos' plan. The rare item that Thanos had intended to barter with the collector was the runner himself, and so we see Thanos convert the runner into a child, into a baby. And from here, we see Thanos tell the runner that he's going to take him to visit the Collector. At this point, we see Thanos transport to the lair of the Collector, and the Collector had been lying in wait. The Collector had intended to destroy Thanos when he first arrived, but of course Thanos, having predicted this, uh, transports directly inside of the lair of the Collector. At this point, he presents the runner to the collector and tells the collector he will trade the collector's infinity gem for the runner. And again, this is something that the collector is willing to do because the runner is the last of his race with him being an elder of the universe. And so there will never be another thing like him. He is in fact one of the most rare items to have ever existed in the Marvel universe. And so what we see is that the uh, the runner leads, or I'm sorry, the uh, collector leads Thanos to uh, various places to uh, to uh, a particular location where he's going to, in effect, house the uh, the runner. And what we see is that Thanos hands the runner over to the collector, and in turn, the collector hands his Infinity Gem over to Thanos. And so what we see is that as Thanos takes the Infinity Gem and begins to walk away. Thanos tells uh, the Collector that the control, I'm sorry, that the Infinity Gem that the Collector had was the Reality Gem. It was the ability to manipulate all facets of reality. But because the Collector had never used the Gem, he had simply kept it stored, he never drew on its power. It had simply just been there. But the fact that the Collector had that kind of power in his possession is something that the Collector laments, the fact that he had just never quite realized it. At this point, we see Thanos demonstrating the power of the reality gem and begins warping the fabric of all reality within the layer of the collector. And what we see is that multiple facets of his reality are simply just twisted and turned. They're churned. They're intertwined to the point where uh, the mind of the collector just can't handle it. What we see is that the collector is uh, shocked by the fact that he had such power that even this, uh, a slight demonstration of the power of the reality gem was vast and it was incredible. And he feels uh, disheartened by the fact that he had just never realized it. What we see is that um, that the collector gives a warning to Thanos. The collector tells the tells Thanos that the Grandmaster will be a far more difficult challenge. What we also see is Thanos uh, taunting the collector and telling the collector that the spell or the uh, the 
the, I guess, effect that he had put on the runner to transform him in, into a baby was temporary. And what we see is that the Thanos, or I'm sorry, that the, the runner transforms back into a uh, full-size adult again. At this point, we see that the uh, runner and the collector begin to fight one another as uh, as the runner is angry at the fact that the collector had intended to, um, to imprison him forever. And we see that the last remaining individual, the uh, last person, the individual monitoring this conflict is the Grandmaster, who in effect is the greatest strategist and quite possibly the greatest mind and the history of uh, the Marvel Universe, which tells us that the last and final gem that Thanos needs to collect is the Mind Gem. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring this video to an end, and what we'll do when we pick up in the next video is we will pick up with the conflict between Thanos and the Grand Master over a game that's been created to capture the Mind Gem, and we'll also see the fallout. We'll see the ramifications of what happens as Thanos captures all of the gems creates the Infinity Gauntlet, and ultimately the lead up to the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. With that being said, I will catch you guys later. Peace. What we see is that uh, the Gardener and Thanos begin to go on a, a walk of sorts. The, uh, the Gardener takes relish in the fact that Thanos is able to appreciate his garden. He's able to appreciate the work that has been put in it. And then we see that Thanos asked the Gardener why it was that he had left the Elders of the Universe, why he had left this uh, sort of... Uh, so as we get into the final chapter of our discussion on the Thanos quest, what we see here is that Thanos is going against the Grandmaster. Now the Grandmaster, like all the other elders of the universe, is the last member of his own race, meaning that he's the only survivor, and as such, he possesses a vast amount of power. But unlike the other elders of the universe that uh, exist for either uh, conquest in the case of the champion or collecting things in the case of the collector, the Grandmaster has developed a uh, keen aspect or a keen mind when it comes to all games of chance, especially when it comes to the concept of game theory. Now to break away from comic books for a second, game theory is a concept that was brought about, I believe, by John Nash. And game theory is a concept uh, within the realm of uh, psychology, sociology, and mathematics, where it drives to determine what the most likely decisions uh, people will make if the success of their decisions depends on the decisions of others. So for example, one of the more popular elements in game theory is what's called the prisoner's dilemma and this is a, uh, a classic instance in game theory whereby the success again of an individual depends on the decisions of other individuals so let's say for example that Benny and Sal are driving to Comic-Con in New York City and along the way they choose to commit a crime now let's say that they're captured by the police and they're put into a police station and they're put in two different interrogation rooms let's say for example that the police come to Benny and they say, Benny, if you point the finger at Sal and say Sal was the mastermind, then you'll go free. You'll serve zero years and Sal will serve 10 years. However, if both of you choose to stay silent, if you say nothing, then you'll serve two years. However, if both you and Sal point the finger at each other, you'll both serve three years. Now, Sal is offered the exact same deal. So the question becomes, what does Benny or Sal do? Does Benny take the risk of serving time, serving 10 years in prison by staying silent, or serving two years, assuming that Sal chooses to stay silent, or does Benny go ahead and point the finger at Sal and take the risk of serving three years, or the possibility of serving zero years if Sal chooses to stay silent? And so this is the concept, this is the question of what happens when people's decisions are successful, but only under the condition that other individuals' uh, decisions are taken into account. And this is what the Grandmaster has devoted his, uh, his existence to. This is what he's mastered, more or less, over the years. And he has done this with virtually all facets of society, with virtually all civilizations within the Marvel Universe. So what we see as we begin to open up into this comic book is that uh, Thanos and the Grandmaster are, of course, approaching one another. And the Grandmaster is aware of why Thanos is here. He's aware of the fact that Thanos has come here to capture his Infinity Gem. In addition, we also see the uh, Grandmaster asking Thanos why it is, or uh, if Thanos is interested in the, uh, the design of this particular game, or what it is that he has to do in order to gain the Grandmaster's Infinity Gem. Thanos says that he doesn't really care, but that most likely the 
Grandmaster is going to explain it anyway, which he does. The Grandmaster tells us that the Infinity Gem that he holds is housed within a pan-dimensional transporter, meaning that it is able to transport between dimensions. In addition, he tells us that there are several layers of force fields that are uh, designed to keep the, uh, the device from being tampered with. In addition, what we see the Grandmaster saying is that in the event that the uh, the shields are breached, any one of the shields are breached, that the pan-dimensional transporter will immediately engage and it'll begin transporting to various unknown locations. And it is designed to do this endlessly. And so Thanos will never be able to locate where this Infinity Gem is. What we also see is that uh, Thanos will not be able to trace this Infinity Gem because of the fact that the pan-dimensional transporter itself will self-destruct. And so again, Again, there'll be no way for Thanos to locate this. What we also see is that um, in, in the event that the Grandmaster's life signs come to an end, uh, in the event that he is killed, that the, uh, again, the device will begin to transport, the, the device will begin to teleport to uh, various locations. But what we also see here is that the Grandmaster tells Thanos that in the event that he loses in their game, that the transdimensional uh, uh, transporter will shut down, that it will simply just uh, stop functioning functioning and Thanos will be able to gain the Infinity Gem. What we also see is that the Grandmaster says that uh, this is going to be a sort of mind game. This is going to be, as he describes it, a quasi-military exercise on the mental plane, and that because he's putting up his Infinity Gem, that Thanos should put up his five Infinity Gems, at the very least, to find a way to make the game more interesting. And so what we see Thanos say is that this is fine, that he doesn't plan on losing. And so we see that Thanos creates a stasis field around the uh, Infinity Gems that will deactivate in the event of his death. What we also see happening here is that uh, as the game commences, as the game begins, that Thanos comes to the realization that the uh, the way it was explained to him by the Grandmaster, the idea that a kill shot will simply just end the simulation, is not true. That this simulation is very much real, and that if a kill shot is uh, is hit, or I guess if uh, Thanos himself were hit with a kill shot, that it would in fact kill him mentally, that it would result in his death in the real world. And so we see that this game has become very real, that this game is no longer uh, a simulation, that it could literally result in the death of either Thanos or the Grandmaster. And so what we see as things progress is Thanos explains to us with a, a sort of mental discussion that he's done this thousands and thousands of times, that he's very used to playing in these uh, high stakes games. And for the most part, he's trying to match wits with the Grandmaster, which for the most part, he seems to be able to do quite readily. But what we see as uh, the comic or as the story continues is that Thanos is able to blow a hole in one of the uh, obelisks and hides inside of it. And as the Grandmaster comes looking for him, the Grandmaster fails to realize that Thanos is hiding inside of it. And so what we see is that the Grandmaster turns around to realize that Thanos has him on guard, that Thanos is in effect going to kill him. And this is a little interesting here because I think that a lot of us, what we had expected when we went into this story and we were reading about the Grandmaster who had one of the greatest minds in the Marvel comics going against Thanos was that most likely Thanos would be uh, defeated by the Grandmaster. The Grandmaster would at the very least, uh, at the very least find some way to outthink him. But what we see here is that Thanos is, as we presume, able to defeat him, and Thanos file, uh, fires the killing blow. But what we see as the smoke clears is that the Grandmaster is alive and well. The Grandmaster is not dead. And the Grandmaster gives us an explanation. He tells us that, in effect, he cheated that he sabotaged Thanos' suit because the stakes were simply just too high for him to, uh, to do anything less. But what we also see here is that the whole reason why the Grandmaster did this, in addition to the stakes being so high, is because he's begun to learn the true potential of the Infinity Gems. And this is the reason why he did not step in when Thanos was pursuing the other elders of the universe, when he was killing them off one by one and taking their gems. He wanted Thanos to uh, defeat each of the elders and then bring the gems to him so that he could in turn defeat Thanos and capture all the gems for himself. What we see is that Thanos is encased in this kind of silicon uh, material and the, uh, the Grandmaster tells him that it should be permeating throughout the entire body of Thanos. It should, in effect, um, be become part of Thanos so that when he pushes him over, that Thanos dies. But what we see is that once Thanos is pushed over, that it's revealed to us that Thanos was a machine. 
that this was not, in fact, the real Thanos. And this is the one element, the the one cog in the wheel that the, uh, the Grandmaster did not think of. And so what we see is that Thanos destroys the uh, device that the Grandmaster had been using to exist on this mental plane. And so the Grandmaster is now stuck inside of his own mind. He's unable to escape. And so what we see here is that Thanos, uh, due to the fact that the game more or less uh, interprets this as the Grandmaster being defeated, is able to gain the last Infinity Gem. Now what we see after Thanos is able to gain the last Infinity Gem is that he begins to celebrate. He begins to relish in the fact that he has absolute power within the universe, that he is virtually unchallenged by anybody within this reality. But it's very important that we distinguish this from the fact that Thanos is all-powerful or godly powerful. Because Thanos' ability to manipulate reality, his power within the Marvel Universe is confined to this reality. This is something that we will actually see play out during the, uh, Than or the, during the uh, Infinity Gauntlet its storyline proper and when we see infinity and other um, uh, other cosmic entities along with eternity and whatnot appealing to the living tribunal to uh, bring an end to Thanos's reign so what we see here is that once Thanos has gained all the infinity gems once he has possession of the infinity gems he transports to the layer of mistress death and what he reveals to us here is that despite having absolute power that he does not wish to wield this absolute power to control the universe as a whole that in fact all he wanted by gaining this power was to be an equal to Mistress Death. He wanted to be her mate, to sit side by side with her for the rest of eternity. But what we see here is that, uh, in fact, Mistress Death doesn't view Thanos as an equal any longer. She doesn't view Thanos as somebody who is uh, by her side. Instead, as her uh, as as one of her minions, as Thanos calls it, uh, relates to him, that Thanos is above her, that Thanos is many stations above her. And we learn this because Thanos doesn't understand why Mistress Death will not address him directly. He doesn't understand why she will not talk to him using her own mouth. Instead, she continues to communicate through her minions. And again, what her minions tell us is that because he is her superior, because he is many stations above her, that it would be uh, it would be out of place for her to speak to him directly, that in effect, she should have somebody interpret for her just because he is so powerful. It's really more of an instance of uh, somebody attempting to address somebody who is above their class, above their station. And so what we see is that Thanos uh, becomes outraged. Thanos lashes out and he destroys the one of the minions of Mistress Death. And this, again, gives us an explanation. This is the lead up to why Thanos launches the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, because what we see is that after all the efforts that Thanos had gone through, after all his attempts to gain the affections of Mistress Death and all the power that he had gained, the one thing he could not do is to make Mistress Death love him. He could force her to talk to him. He could force her to speak directly to him. But in the end, she would not be doing it of her own accord. And so this is when we see the Infinity Gauntlet storyline launching. This is when we see Thanos going to great lengths to demonstrate his love for Mistress Death, albeit in a perverse way, by killing half the life in the universe. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, this is a buildup. And I think that what you guys will see with the Infinity Gauntlet storyline is a very rich and very detailed story. As we see multiple superheroes, despite the fact that they are entirely outclassed, doing everything they can to, attempt, to attempt to to stop the power of Thanos. With that being said, I will catch you guys later. Peace. Thanos tells us that at one point in time, the Infinity Gems were a single entity, they were a single being that had limitless power, and that this being was the only thing in the universe. And that the problem is that because it was the only thing, because it had power, because it had uh, emotion, because it had sentience, that it recognized that there was really nothing for it. There was really nothing for it to do. There was no purpose in its life. And so it had an effect, simply just existed forever. It existed alone.